So I'm pretty bad at managing my time, honestly. I have struggled a lot and I finally feel at the point where I was maybe on top of all my things and then that changed because I got sick. But I wrote this video while I was kind of on top of my... <coughs> 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 <laughs> I wrote this video when I was really feeling like on top of my sh oops for the first time in months and you know that was thwarted but I'm trying to have a positive mindset think maybe I can return to that somehow productive state and to be fair I couldn't keep up with that kind of productivity when I was sick because I needed to rest you cannot be operating at 100% all the time you can't be productive all the time productivity doesn't determine your worth in any way I really want to make that clear in this video because I am pretty anti-hustle culture in a lot of ways that being said I do tend to feel really just not fulfilled when I don't feel like I am engaging with the things I care about and in order to to engage with the things I care about, I often need to do some sort of work. So if you're up to challenging avoidant behaviors, these are some of my organizational and productivity methods that I feel like have helped a lot. I'm also going to be sharing some of the items I have that I feel like have just improved my life in some capacity and just talking about the girl boss mindset. <laughs> girl boss. We're going to be girl bossing our lives today. So before I get into the specific methods I use for staying on track and generally getting my life together, I would like to thank Flexispot for collaborating with me on this video. And they actually sent me this holiday package for me to unbox with you guys. So I'm pretty excited. Flexispot sent me a standing desk about two months ago and honestly, I'm obsessed with it. It's completely adjustable, which I love because even when I'm sitting, I can have it at a comfortable height for myself. I'm pretty tall, so I don't like to be hunched over a short desk. And I love switching between sitting and standing when I'm doing my work because I feel like it really helps me channel my energy. The height adjustment process is super fast and happens at the touch of a button and you can program up to four user presets. There are also USB ports for charging your phone. I really do love this desk a lot and I use it for all of my creative things like doing YouTube, making music, and all that stuff. Okay, let's get into the unboxing. I'm very curious about this. Whoa, this is actually crazy. I feel like I'm getting a present right now. What the heck? That is so cute. I'm hearing jingling happening right now. First off, we have a magnetic cord organizer to go on the desk. I have a stocking now. Jingle dangle. These are little like paper holders that are Christmas themed. This nice travel mug, which is great because I actually literally don't have one of these, so thank you. Christmas card set for me to use. This is like a nice, really nice like leather desk mat. And a 2022 calendar to go on my desk. Thank you Flexispot for all the cute little Christmas goodies. If you're interested, I'll have a link in the description to the desk I have because it's so cool and you should check it out. All right, let's go into the rest of the video. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Pomodoro method and the five minute timer method. I'll go over them briefly in case you don't know what they are. In the Pomodoro method, you set a timer for 25 minutes to do work and then you take a five minute break. I honestly have tried this method before. I haven't had a lot of success with it because I often take breaks a lot longer than five minutes. It does help get you over that hump of starting when you're saying, oh, I'm just gonna work for 25 minutes, but I just haven't found that particular method to be very successful for me. With the five minute timer method, basically you set a timer for five minutes, you promise yourself you're only gonna do work for five minutes. If you wanna keep working after that, you can. I like this method a little bit better because it just gets you over that hump of starting, much like the Pomodoro method would, but it doesn't necessarily set that end goal as 25 minutes. And it's more likely that you might get into sort of a flow of doing the work. Now, my method that I feel like kind of combines the goals of these two methods is the stopwatch method. I recently recently came up with this and I found it to be very successful for me. Basically what I'll do is I'll set a stopwatch on my phone so that I can keep track of how much time I'm spending doing my work. Anytime I want to take a break, I hit the pause on the stopwatch and then I start it again when I start doing my work again. What this does for me is it really helps to quantify how much time I'm spending doing things because a lot of the time it can feel like you're not getting anything done, especially when you don't fully complete 
complete a task, or at least that's how I feel. So having a quantified representation of the work I've been doing is really helpful when it doesn't feel like I've accomplished anything because I can look at that number and say, oh, I've been working for 40 minutes and I succeeded in that. So it's definitely not about like thinking about how much you're able to accomplish in such a short amount of time, but it is about quantifying the time you spend and little things add up. So even if you take a lot of breaks, you know, like, okay, during the time that stopwatch is going, I'm committed to doing this work right now. And I found myself getting into the flow state with this timer method and found myself working for like 50 minutes when that is that was like unheard of for me. Another method is doing things as soon as they pop into your head, like sending texts and things like that. I have had success with doing this before and also not success with doing this. <laughs> but it kind of like skips the step of like trying to remember to do it later, it skips the step of like writing it on your task list. If you have one, I highly recommend that because you just did it. You already got it done. Another really important thing to do with your ability to accomplish things is to sleep. Please sleep enough. I prioritize my sleep so much. Sleep is super important in my life and I wouldn't have it any other way. Another thing I recommend doing is doing work in the morning. This works really well for me personally, at least for academic work. When I'm doing things like editing videos, I actually find a lot of success doing those at night because they're more creative and I'm so experienced with editing at this point and I know exactly how I edit my videos that it doesn't really feel like I'm struggling against my own brain to grasp a concept or something. But when you do work in the morning, you don't have decision fatigue yet you know all the decisions you make in a day really add up and so doing work in the morning might be a lot easier than doing it later in the day when you're already kind of tired i have a routine of going to a campus coffee shop getting my favorite coffee sitting down doing work and i do this before my german class every day i have that class and i do the work for that class in that time slot so in a sense i'm very motivated to get that work done because i need to get it done before the before the class starts. But it does feel like a little reward for myself to get to sit in that environment and have my favorite little coffee. I highly recommend combining your work with things you like, like a certain type of music or your favorite tea or coffee or a place you really like to go. Combining your work with things you like will just make the entire experience better. And sometimes it can even be, dare I say, enjoyable. That's only if you really like the work you're doing. And on this topic of going somewhere else, I think it's really important to set spatial boundaries for yourself. Like for me, I mainly do creative work in my room, like video stuff, music stuff, and then academic work I tend to do in my living room or my kitchen or out at a coffee shop. And of course, this really depends on your living situation. If you're able to set those spatial boundaries like that, and like if you're able to find a safe space to work in your home but public libraries have always been a really wonderful place to do work coffee shops wonderful place to do work if you have access to those things i highly recommend you take advantage of them to have a spatial boundary now let's talk about our phones i'm addicted to my phone i don't know about you maybe you're watching this on your phone you probably are i'm addicted to my phone i avoid doing work by going on my phone just on instagram honestly scrolling mindlessly for no reason it's all i've already seen all the stuff on my feed why am i on instagram i don't know so i hate to be the bearer of bad news but what you need to do is you need to turn off your phone you need to leave it at home or you need to give it to a friend i find leaving it at home if i go somewhere to do work or giving it to a friend to be really really successful because i don't even have to fight the urge to go on my phone i'm not spending energy fighting that urge not even having the option is such a relief and i can just focus on what i'm doing i think about it for a second and then it's like oh it's at home i don't have it or oh my boyfriend has it i can't i can't get my phone so i can't go on it I'm gonna do my work. This is hard, of course, to even take the step to be like, I'm leaving it at home, okay. Committing to an hour without it, but honestly, you'll feel better. It'll be a relief, it'll be okay. So I have kind of switched over to using Notion for organizing a lot of my stuff, like planning videos, keeping track of sponsorships, and keeping track of my thesis. As you are watching this, I'm actually going into my first weekend of shooting for my short thesis film called Wake. Yes, I do go to film school. I have been working on this film for over six months and I'm really excited to shoot it, but it's incredibly stressful 
to organize. Because there are so many things you need to keep track of when you're making a movie, from like costumes to the budget to making a shot list. So I have all of that information on one Notion page and it has improved my life significantly. It has made me feel like I'm kind of on top of my thesis in a way, even though I also am in a way very not on top of it right now. <laughs> There's definitely a learning curve to using Notion, don't get me wrong, but I main, I just use templates. I use the quick note template for planning all of my videos. I used it for my thesis page. You can embed things like Google Sheets in Notion, which I find super, super helpful. And it's really just nice to have things all kept track of in one place. So yes, I do use Notion. I do highly recommend it. It does take some time to learn and organize. You are spending some time honestly like putting everything in there plugging things in but once you do i found that it honestly is such a relief to be able to see it all laid out visually so breaks don't really work unless you commit to them mentally and i often find that i cannot commit to a break unless i do the thing that i'm worried about at least writing it down at least coming up with a plan of how i'm gonna do it taking one first step even if you don't accomplish the whole thing if you make the connection between completing a task with the relief that comes from completing it, you it's just way easier to start because you know you're gonna get that sense of relief and you're gonna be able to rest. I'm coming, I'm saying this from a place of like not even really doing work during the day, like just not doing things. If you're working really, really hard during the day and these things are still intruding on you, that's definitely a different case. But for my case, it's like, I don't really feel like I'm accomplishing that much. And then I can't rest because I've just been kind of resting all day, but not really resting because I've been thinking and worrying about the things I need to do. In that case, the only way you're gonna find relief is to at least get started. At least do one little thing in the direction of what you need to do. Because if you make even just a little bit of progress, your break is actually going to feel like a break. Also, for the most part, no one's watching you do your work as you're doing it. It's okay if it's messy. It's okay if it's not exactly right right away. You know what I mean? Like find a way that works for you, even if it means reading something literally out loud to yourself in a voice. Anything that you feel like will help you Try it. So we've talked about some of my methods for just sort of keeping my life together, keeping myself organized. But I just want to take a second to talk about some of the like things I have that I feel like have improved my life in some capacity. So first off, we have Puffy over here. I got this stuffed animal basically for emotional comfort purposes and honestly... I love it. It's very large, so I can hug it, and it's a pillow. This is a squishable for anyone curious. I got it from a website called Animal Kingdom, and I love him. <laughs> I haven't had a stuffed animal at college at all until now. It is my senior year. I purchased this guy, and I really like having him around. Genuinely, just very comforting. I highly recommend that you get a big stuffed animal, honestly, because I do feel like this has significantly improved my well-being. I am not even joking. The next one I want to talk about is, of course, my standing desk. Thank you again, Flex the Spot. I feel like this has been a real game changer. I've always really liked standing when I'm doing my work. I like switching between sitting and standing, and this has really enabled that for me, and I love having that ability in my home, because normally that's just sort of like find a tall table at the library or something like that. It also enables me to like keep a good posture while I'm doing my work. And it's super convenient for me for filming because I can get a camera at the exact right level with like minimal effort. So <laughs> for me personally, that has been really awesome. And while we're on the topic of posture, I want to shout out my foam roller as well because I impulse spot this like last week and I have no regrets. Me adjusting my camera with the desk. <laughs> I've also really taken to coloring recently as a restful activity. So I have my 64 pack of crayons, which has been serving me very well. I print pictures from the internet. I also got this, <laughs> this mermaid coloring book, ages four to eight. So <laughs> I honestly just enjoy coloring a lot because it's really just therapeutic 
and I'm not making a lot of creative decisions and I'm just like making something pretty. So yeah, it's like a minimal effort, very restful activity. It doesn't involve looking at a screen and I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> so honestly, taking breaks to do coloring has really just helped me feel more at ease. Two weeks ago before I bought this pack of crayons and the coloring book, I have been feeling for three days straight an intense need to color, like to the point where it's like, I need, I need, to get crayons right now <laughs> or I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. So I did and it improved my life. So here's your sign. Print out some pictures from the internet. Google coloring pages nature for some more like mature type coloring pages and do some coloring. I also want to shout out my water bottle. It's really important to stay hydrated. It's really important to you know make sure you're drinking water during class while you're out and about and so always having a water bottle with you is really important. This has been my video on productivity, organizational techniques. I know I don't usually do things like this, but I felt like it was important going into final season to share some of the things that work for me. This is a way of getting myself back on track, reminding myself because I don't succeed at this usually. If I'm honest, I had like a couple days of really doing this and then I got sick and I had to stop. And that was really devastating for me because it felt like um, everything was being thwarted. But I need to remind myself that it's always possible to do these things. It's always possible. Unless of course you're like super exhausted and burnt out, in which case you need rest. But of course, I'm coming from a place of like, I don't really do work. <laughs> if this video was helpful for you, let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, commenting down below. Make sure you check out Flexispot with the link in my description. Thank you again, Flexispot, for collaborating with me on this video. And I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.